Hello and welcome to my presentation, Heart Disease, The Ten Myths. My name is Ari Blitz of the McAllen Heart Hospital, which is part of the South Texas Health System. Of note, most of the information contained in these slides is from the American Heart Association on their website, www.heart.org. Myth number one. I'm too young to worry about heart disease. This is a dangerous myth that persists, and it's all the more worrisome because we're finding that risk factors are becoming more common at even younger ages. In a recent study using ultrasound in, uh, in normal teenagers, 17% of them were found to have plaque in their arteries. The reason for this is atherosclerosis starts early and progresses over time. In this diagram, you see the progression of atherosclerosis in a blood vessel, starting from the left-hand side during the first decade of life, and then continuing over subsequent decades. The process may take longer or shorter depending on risk factors in the individual patient. Myth number two. I'd know if I had high blood pressure because there would be warning signs. Most of us know that hypertension is known as the silent killer. It in fact injures almost every organ of the body over time when it is not under control. One in three adults have hypertension, so it is one of the more common risk factors for heart disease epidemiologically. The problem is only 50% of those with hypertension are under control. What this means is that in those patients whose blood pressure is poorly controlled, they can develop complications over time that can affect almost every organ, including the brain, the eyes, the heart, the kidneys, as well as peripheral blood vessels. Myth number three. I'll know when I'm having a heart attack because I'll have chest pain. This is in fact the way heart attacks are depicted in most movies and television series. The devastating epidemiological consideration is that someone has a heart attack in this country every 23 seconds. Problematically, symptoms can be subtle, especially in women. If one looks across all men and women who have heart attacks, 30% of men do not have chest pain at the time of a heart attack, and even more often, 42% of women do not have chest pain. This is obviously worrisome and it's a misconception. On the left-hand side of this diagram are some of the more common symptoms in both men and women, and they include, as obviously listed, crushing chest pain. It does occur in most instances, but certainly not all, as we have just seen. Other symptoms common to both sexes include cold and profuse sweating, nausea, pain waiting to the neck or left arm, as well as the sudden onset of symptoms. If you glance at the right side, here are the more symptoms that are common in women. A profound sense of fatigue, shortness of breath, flu-like discomfort, feeling of indigestion or heartburn, and symptoms that may progress over a number of days. You can see why one might be confused if they have these symptoms and not associate them with heart attack. The bottom line, if these symptoms occur, persist, please seek medical attention. Myth number four. Diabetes won't threaten my heart as long as I take my medication. And the corollary of this myth is that diabetes won't threaten my heart as long as my sugar is under good control. 
The fact of the matter is that diabetes is a risk factor in and of itself, regardless of the degree of glucose control or whether you take your medications. It's not to say that the degree of control isn't important. It is. But just the fact that you have diabetes puts you at higher risk. This high risk comes partially from the diabetes and also partially from other overlapping risk factors that are more common in diabetics, including hypertension, cholesterol issues, and obesity. This table lists some of the epidemiological facts about diabetes in the U.S. I want to call your attention to the first part with the contained exclamation point, which shows that diabetics have two to three times increased risk for heart disease as compared to non-diabetics. Cast a glance over at the fourth heart as well with the lightning bolt running through the middle. The fact contained here is that when diabetics have heart disease, they are two to four times more likely to die or have complications from the heart disease. Myth number five, heart disease runs in my family, so there's nothing I can do to prevent it. This is a common misconception that implies that the role of heredity is more important than the environment, and that is not the case. Just because you're predisposed by heredity towards a condition doesn't mean that it is predetermined that it will occur. Lifestyle changes and medications are important in altering the natural history. You can modify your risk. Diagrammatically, we can illustrate this concept by showing that in the upper left-hand corner, mutations sometimes do occur, increasing your risk for heart disease. There is a natural prevalence in individuals of genes that predispose heart to heart towards heart disease above and beyond mutations. And at the bottom is something that can be considered a stopgap. It's, stop it's the risk factors for heart disease. And modification of these risk factors may decrease the likelihood of you developing heart disease or at least delay it. Myth number six, I don't need to have my cholesterol checked until I'm middle-aged. The actual American Heart Association recommendation is that one should start having the cholesterol checked at the age of 20. Because cholesterol, in fact, can be higher at earlier ages, and the screening should actually start even sooner if there's a strong family history of high cholesterol. And this myth is related partially to the first myth that we showed about uh, the age at which heart disease occurs. Remember this diagram of what happens over time with plaque. Myth number seven. Heart failure means the heart stops beating. This is a common misconception, and in part due to the fact that heart failure may have been a poor term applied to the condition. When someone suffers a cardiac arrest, that is actually when the heart stops beating. And usually these patients are undergoing CPR or defibrillation. Heart failure, contrary-wise, is, that, is when a condition when the heart is still beating, but it isn't beating well. Cardiac arrest is also a condition that is more acute, whereas heart failure is generally a more chronic condition with some acute exacerbations. Patients with heart failure feel miserable, may be short of breath, have a tendency to retain fluid, have weakness, and a poor drive. Myth number eight. The pain in my legs must be a sign of aging. I'm sure it has nothing to do with my heart. The fact of the matter is that pain in the legs may be a sign of peripheral arterial disease. The presence of peripheral arterial disease raises your risk for having a heart attack by five times. 
the car the presence of cardiovascular disease in any one part of the body may predict its occurrence elsewhere so that cardiovascular disease can occur at multiple sites in the body and that is because the process is similar everywhere in the body where there is a blood vessel there is a risk of developing narrowing from atherosclerosis of the arteries. Here on the left we see a normal artery going to the foot and on the right we see one that has developed cholesterol plaque over time. What the cholesterol plaque does is it gradually narrows the artery and decreases the blood supply to the affected extremity or organ. Occasionally the plaque can rupture and when this occurs in the heart it causes a heart attack and in other organs it can cause acute organ ischemia or, or low blood flow. Myth number nine. My heart is beating really fast. I must be having a heart attack. Of all the myths that I am presenting today, this is the only one that should make you feel somewhat better. Most of the time when the heart is beating really fast, it's a fairly innocuous condition. However, under certain circumstances, it can be more worrisome. Tachycardia or a fast heart rate may be normal under certain conditions, which I will show in a moment. If, however, that fast heart rate persists or recurs without an obvious explanation, you should notify your physician. In this box, here are some of the conditions or stressors that can lead to a fast heart rate. They include exercise, stress, smoking, fever. Fever is well known to raise the heart rate by approximately 10 beats per minute for every degree. Alcohol can cause a fast heart rate, as can caffeine and obviously cocaine. On the right are more surreptitious causes of a fast heart rate, and this is when it becomes much more worrisome. Heart disease can cause it. A primary arrhythmia of the heart can cause it. Anemia can cause it, and thyroid disease can cause it, among other conditions. Finally, myth number 10. I should avoid exercise having, after having a heart attack. This is not true because exercise is beneficial after having a heart attack. Your cardiologist can recommend to you the strenuousness of the exercise. Uh, there are two ways we prevent heart disease. One is called primary prevention. The second is called secondary prevention. The bottom line is primary prevention is meant to decrease your risk of ever developing heart disease. Secondary prevention occurs after you've already been diagnosed with heart disease and you're trying to minimize its effects or delay its complications. The American Heart Association recommendation is to have greater than two and a half hours of exercise per week. The exercise should be at most moderate. Recent evidence suggests that mild to moderate is better than moderate to severe. And the bottom line here is those who exercise live longer and live better. So in summary, relying on false assumptions can be dangerous to your heart. Cardiovascular disease kills more Americans each year than any other disease. By separating fact from fiction, you can live longer and live better. Thank you.